see, see it ready. Okay, thank you for introduction. Uh, I'll talk about Don't stop. Can I start? Yeah, please start. Okay, so I'll talk about lossy compression of matrices by black box optimization. Mix integer nonlinear programming. I'm Tadashi Kadova from Tenso, and this work is a joint, uh, joint work with Mitsuru Anbai. Okay. So, lossy matrix compression or matrix decomposition is a task that the target matrix is divided into the product of the matrix, integer matrix M and L matrix C. So we want to minimize this, the difference between two matrices uh, in terms of M integer and real matrices. So this is mixed integer nonlinear programming and it's NP hard. And application of this matrix decomposition we demonstrated in image recognition as well as voice recognition. For image recognition, the memory size is one third and the execution time is one over 37, which is good for edge computing. So how to solve this matrix decomposition? The most popular approach is, for example, the, it's already demonstrated in, by him and his colleague in XC last year. Uh, they optimize the real variables first, after that, optimize integer variables, and repeat this until it converges. And uh, one book, the author demonstrated uh, the another approach, which is one rank approximation. The outer product of the two vectors make a matrix, uh, but it's, it's poor approximation, so we can repeat this uh, one rank approximation to the residual of the matrix. Again, to have a good approximation. Uh, here, in this presentation, we propose another approach uh, by data drip approach. And if uh, we generate fast the relationship between matrix and cost, and if, if we have a data set, uh, we model the relationship of the data. And once we have a model, uh, we can optimize that model. And the optimization um, find new candidate, and we can repeat this. And the data set is growing, and we have a better modeling, and we have data optimization. Uh, optimization. So the first step, we want to remove continuous variables. And that means we trans translate, convert the mixed integer programming to integer programming. So if the M is fixed, uh, C, the metric C is calculated like this, and instituting this relationship uh, we have a P of M. So now we have the optimization of M. This is nonlinear integer programming. So again, this is what we have to do. Uh, however, the cost function here is very complicated. So we forget it. I mean that we take a data group approach. Uh, so we don't directly optimize this complicated function, uh, but we generate data using this function. Again, uh, we put the matrix M and we have a data set and we model the relationship with the data matrix M and cost of the matrix. And we model uh, in the cubo form, this case, so that 
we can optimize the model using Ising solver. So Ising solver uh, output the next candidate to be calculated the cost. And then repeat again, so we will have a better solution. Okay, so there are several proposals of black box optimization for binary variables. One is a BOCS proposed by Batista and Brobzek, and FMQA is proposed by Guy and his colleagues, and it's presented in AQC. The difference between two algorithms is the model generation. The BOCS utilizes Bayesian inference, so it infers the distribution of the cube box, but we don't have the technique to directly optimize the distribution of the cube ball. So we need a, a specific cube ball metric. So we sample from this distribution. So it's kind of Thompson sampling. And this algorithm, randomized algorithm. Uh, for FMQA, it's, it utilizes factorization machine. So it's point estimation and the deterministic algorithm. And I'd like to mention that the BOCS, the QA version of BOCS is also reported in Koshikawa and her colleagues in AQC. Okay, so there are several variations, potential variations of this algorithm because BOCS has prior. The original prior is a horseshoe prior, uh, vanilla BOCS. Uh, we consider two another additional priors, normal prior and normal gamma prior. Those have a hyperparameters, so I optimize it before. And FMQA, it has a hyperparameter K associated with the dimension of the latent vectors. So I apply K equal 8 and 12. And we also test the random sampling. For aging solvers, in addition to the conventional schmated annealing as well as quantum annealing, uh, we test the schmated quenching, which is the quenching the temperature to zero immediately. Before moving to the results, I'd like to share the energy landscape of this program. So the product, uh, the, uh, so, Invariant and the permutation of columns like this, the order is changed. Or swap signs, I, I express in a cartoon. Okay, so there are, in this case, 48 degeneracies for K equal 3. These 48 solutions are displayed here, and this is a clustering analysis of those solutions. And I cut here into the four groups which is used in the rate analysis. And as this is degenerated, the data augmentation can be applied. So this is a result, the algorithm comparison. Okay, so among those algorithms, uh, you see, ah, okay, first, this is a iteration step, and the y axis is the best residual error obtained during the iteration. Okay, so you see the vanilla POCS and the normal prior POCS, so the best performance. So I tested 10 random instances and summarized in the table. And you see the end of BOCS show the best success rate is 36% for the uh, solution accuracy. And for execution time, it also fast compared to other algorithms. Okay, now we consider the data augmentation. You see the data augmentation does not improve the results because the QA data fitting, QA model 
can't approximate the host function globally. Uh, that causes this poor performance. And next, the comparison among using solvers. You see there's no significant difference among using solvers, including the quenching algorithm. The table again, so I add this part. So you see symmetric annealing with normal prior BOCS and QA version and SQ version. Uh, you see the best performance among all algorithms. And I think there's no significant difference between three algorithms. Uh, uh, however, you see the execution time, uh, the QA takes long time because the QPU runtime run itself is very short, but you see the very large overhead. As Catherine explained in the first day, Okay, the final result. So I visualize the relationship between the balance between exploration and the exploitation. So among four groups. So in the random sampling, the four colored lines are almost identical. That means it's completely biased toward exploration. The similar figure we see in the data augmentation algorithm. So that means it's very poor performance. And vanilla BOCS also tend to be exploited. Okay, other side. So for FMQA, this is extreme case. The early period, it biased towards the exploitation so it's just focusing on very small area of the solution space in early time. So it, it was towards exploit. And the best three performance algorithm show uh, it's, it's well balanced between exploration and exploitation. Okay, summarize the results. Uh, the Mixed integer nonlinear programming program is transferred into the nonlinear integer program program and solved by binary DDO. And the normal prior DOC shows the best performance. We have some insights for further development. The first one is the data augmentation uh, to make the data set cover globally in such space. Uh, however, as we simplify the fitting model, Cubo, it can't approximate the cost function globally. And the second one is that there's no significant difference between using solvers. This is non trivial because the SQ is greedy. Optimization of the surrogate model might be easy compared to the explicit form of the original cost function. Visualization of the balance between exploration and exploitation help our understanding. Finally, the advantage of quantum annealing in the binary black box optimization is an open question. That's it. Thank you for your attention. Questions and comments? Thanks for the talk. I'm a bit confused on why the data augmentation makes the result worse. I mean, you are kind of encoding the symmetries. So if it doesn't help, I would have expected not to change the result, but not making it worse. Could you comment on that? Yes, that is related to this. And that is my thought at this time, there's no evidence. Uh, but the strengths of the black box optimization 
with relatively simple modeling is that the, we first explored the large space solution space without bias, but if we get some biased data sampling and it's around one of the global minimum basin, we should focus on the very small area and uh, intend to get samples. And we get fine, fine tuned uh, cost function representation on this area and we will get a good result. But uh, it's very difficult to fit the, with the cubo, very limited to explore the function uh, to fit in a global with many global minima. That, uh, that type of structure, cost function, it's very difficult. That's why the, in this case, data augmentation doesn't work well. Does it make sense? So is it like, I mean, those states are separated by, I don't know, they are far away or separated by barriers or something? I still don't get it. Ah, uh, yeah, that part I don't study well, but uh, the structure, of the reason why we have many degeneracy is uh, like you see these uh, vectors constructing one matrix, yeah? And if you change the order of, for this case, the red and the blue change. And we also change the order of red and blue here. That is equivalent. Uh, so this causes a very complicated landscape of the cost function. And I have no idea how, what the cost landscape looks like. But that, that is a, a feature a study I should conduct. Thanks. So uh, I have a question. Um, uh, did you, uh, so you, you transformed the original problem to the, the, the another problem. Yes. And uh, how, what is the I mean, accuracy of the solution obtained by new, new formulation? Mm -hmm. Okay, so again, the cubo data fitting is not perfect. Uh, but in this case, this is the residual error. That means this line is the second best. Uh, so below this line means this is among 25 runs average. But if the curve touch this line, that means some of the runs get the exact solution. So that, that means this, this approach is not, not bad. It's it's pretty good approach, I think. Okay, thank you. Other questions? If not, let's thank the speaker again. Thank you.